Kellen, my, my first question, what, what was the deciding factor or factors in you running for the leadership of the New Democratic Party? Well, for me, it was, uh, it was a question about whether the leadership qualities that I have or the way that I approach politics is something that's important at this time, right? For the, not just for this party, but for the country. It's a, it's a question that we're having to answer at the same time, which is, uh, what does the country need? And what does the party need? I thought, coming from northern BC, but having grown up in Toronto, uh, gave me a unique perspective on politics, about how to connect that rural and urban divide that has been exploited by the current government. Okay, and, and if elected, you know, hypothetical question, if elected to a majority government, how would, how would a Nathan Cullen majority government differ from a Stephen Harper majority government? A lot less mean. And a lot more interested in looking at what the actual evidence is before we make up policy, right? I, I look at the way the government runs and everything is a political exercise. Everything's looking to certain voters or just dismissing the actual things that work, you know? And evidence isn't important to these guys. That seems crazy, you know? That just doesn't seem right or very un-Canadian. Particularly when they're dividing people so often, trying to pit one group against another. That, that to me seems like it's almost unethical because the government shouldn't do that. Just mm -hmm. try to unify people, not tear them apart. Okay, and then and what steps would you take to sort of break past the, the regional and cultural barriers in our country and sort of just bring us together as one? Well, the same approach that I take in the place where I live is that you, you first find common ground, right? So if we say taking care of our most vulnerable, our seniors is really important, then that's, that's common ground that Canadians across the spectrum can agree to. We believe in education. Right? We should have a government that also believes in education. That's, that's some solid common ground that you, you, you found that and then you step up on that to make your next step. Right? And so I think when you bring people together and have success together, getting something good done, a home retrofit program, a better foreign policy, people will learn from those successes and do the next thing better as well. Okay, and, and speaking of foreign policy, where, where do you stand on as far as Canada's deployment and missions such as Afghanistan and Libya and... Seems to me we don't have a consistent criteria. We don't have a list that we check off and say this is, this is when we're going to get involved and this is when we're not. And if a government's just making it up as they go, it, it opens you up to making all of those decisions politically rather than making them about world peace and the things that we pursue. I think uh, we, all of our steps should be making a better world. And sometimes I think it, it's an easy answer to say, well, let's go to war. Once, once you start a war, it's, it's the consequences and the final result are unknown. You, you don't know where you're going to end up. You have to be very careful about it. And I think government should be more transparent. We will be more transparent about when it is that we go to war and when it is that we don't. And, and performing the whole way that we do foreign aid. Because right now we're not doing our country proud. It's become way, way too narrow, way too political, and not actually helping people on the ground. Okay, and, and if elected, how would you, how would you work towards making, more go making government more transparent for, for the average Canadian to see? By, by making it more transparent, right? We, we actually have some laws in place that would force government to be more open about what's happening. Stop lying about the numbers. Uh, by numbers, I mean what's in the budget and what's not in the budget. Be more fundamentally accountable, right? So that when mistakes are made, you own up to them that you feel that it's part of the job description as Prime Minister, as leader, to say when things went wrong. But there's two things you've never heard Stephen Harper say. One is, I'm sorry, and the other is, I was wrong. That means he's always been right, and he's never been sorry for anything that he's done. Well, that's crazy. That's crazy. That doesn't, that's not human. That's not normal. Right? People make mistakes all the time. So let's be accountable for our actions, and let's just be a little more humble about it. Okay, and then and switching over to the economy, how, how would you go about tackling our deficit while at the same time balancing you know, the social services? Yeah, sure. Well, you need a good economy to pay for those social programs, right? Education, healthcare, all those important things. I think it's actually a, a question that the answer fundamentally lies in what we do with the things that we have. So our natural resources are something that we have as a country. We're not using them very well right now. We're giving companies a free ticket to export everything raw, and that's disastrous economically. It's also, by the way, environmentally a big problem. So why not try to combine those two interests, which is to say, let's take care of the planet, let's have a stronger and healthier economy. And one of the ways you do that is not sending out everything raw, raw logs and raw minerals and raw oil. I mean, all of that stuff 
and you add value to it, that's how you create a economy, not by uh, thinking about it only after the fact. Okay. And then speaking as a student, what, what can you say to students as far as what would you propose to, to manage rising tuition costs at, and the higher cost of living? And it's generally, what is your message to, to the younger generation? Two ways. We in the political class have to get better at talking to you. And when we get better at talking to you, then you need to respond and get involved. Because many of the decisions that happen in Parliament or various places, their impacts aren't felt right away. They're for years from now. Right? Whether we decide to go this way or that way. Be it tuition, be it going to war, be it any of those things. The world is run by the people who show up to the meeting. That's a hard reality. That's just the truth though. And unfortunately, I think, and purposefully, young people have been turned off politics by politicians and political parties. We need to turn them back on, have them show up, bring in their values, and then just watch this thing take off. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and what would, what's the biggest challenge you find as far as getting the oh, youth involved in Most politics? politicians are terrible at talking to young people. We're actually quite intimidated talking to young people. We don't like them. We're scared of them, right? All that kind of stuff. So just getting in the door and going where the young folks are hanging out, getting better at social media, getting better at the conversations in the places where they're being held, and then starting to talk about some of the values that young people have. You know, I think some in politics get so cynical that when someone presents something more idealistically, they want to dismiss it. That's not the way of the real world, right? Well, the real world is the one we create. We create that together. We create it with our values and our ideals. Nothing wrong with being idealistic. It should be pushing us more demanding better, knowing that we can do better together and not be so cynical. You know, sometimes in politics you see things not go the right way. You got two reactions to that. One is to try to make it better. The other more negative reaction is you just accept it as the way it is and that's just too bad. I don't accept too much as the way it is. I like to see change. Okay, and if, if people want to find out more about your campaign, where can they go? Easy peasy. NathanCullen.ca. Right. Right. Go online, go on our Facebook, check us out. We're, we're pretty interactive. We like to... Uh, I like conversations. Alrighty, Nathan, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Take care.